It is Tuesday, March 28th, and I'm out looking at my seedlings in the greenhouse. And it looks like there's an aphid infestation. Um, every time you spray a plant with insecticide or neem oil, things like that, it affects the health of the plant. So when plants are this young, I don't like to spray any sort of sprays on them, even organic ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash the leaves off with this here soapy water and try to remove the aphids that way. So the eggplant seemed to be hit the hardest. So I'll start there. But anything like ants, the soapy water uh, alone should kill them. Uh, if you've ever seen ants in soapy water, their joints basically explode and they look like a... they've been, I guess, uh, <laughs> for better lack of a word, they look like they've been blown apart by a grenade or something. Um, so hopefully, just doing this take care of the problem. Poor little plants. These are banana pepper seedlings. Some aphids on these. Click on the tomatoes, they mainly attack the seed leaves. Jelly beans. Oh, there are so many dead aphids in my water now. Oh, wow, they even got the ground cherry here, which is teeny tiny. Come on, guys. Eat some slack. <laughs> and that's all for now. And now for an update on my green beans. Um, all four varieties have surfaced. So this is the contender. And back here are the blue lakes. These are the provider. These are the pencil pod. And back here are the Roma too. So not all the beans have surfaced yet. Uh, hopefully more will. We'll see in the next few days. Um, if not, it looks like the ones that have surfaced are plenty uh, for the two of us. And um, 
really happy. Hopefully they do a lot better than my first attempt. So I sprayed my tomatoes plants uh, with baking soda uh, spray the other day uh, because I noticed that the fungus and blight were spreading. So I was trying to uh, do a little preventive maintenance on some of the plants and then other plants just try to stop the blight and the fungus in the tracks. Um, the plants look pretty healthy after the spray. I'm noticing on the back of the leaves that they're kind of spotty. I don't know what this means. Is this like dead fungus or something else? But the leaves themselves feel really good. They're very, um, I'm going to put it, <laughs> they're very crisp feeling, uh, slightly moist, so it's a nice good tomato sweat off of these. That's always a sign of a happy tomato when it's sweating. Um, still lots of flowers and no fruit, so I'm going to go ahead and do brush them today. See if I can force some fruit. <laughs> you should be able to see the pollen fly as I do this. Hmm, I think I might have a winner here. Uh, usually you can tell if a uh, tomato has been pollinated properly um, because the stem, will, the little stem here will start thickening up. And taking a look underneath. It looks like we might have a winner. Yeah. My indeterminate tomatoes are shut up quite a bit. Uh, many of the plants are now putting out flowers, uh, so they are reaching maturity. Uh, a lot of these varieties are only two to three feet tall at maturity, so a nice little set of, <laughs> uh, I guess, green carpet it kind of looks like. Anyhow, um, I love this green. It's, it's very pretty. So I'm out here with my handy candy toothbrush, um, giving these plants a little, giving these flowers a little tickle. To see if I can get some tomatoes off of these. I think most of these tomatoes are small variety or cherry tomatoes. So we'll see what we get. And here's an update on my corn. Um, a dozen of them survived to get this big. Uh, hopefully they're now um, free of danger from the pill bugs. I went ahead and rearranged them into a tighter formation such that when they get big um, there's more chance that the corn will pollinate. I also started adding soybeans to the bag to fill in the empty space so as those uh, germinate and surface and get true leaves I will put them into the bag um, on the edges where there's space. With the eggplant eater either taking a break or for whatever reason leaving my yard, I now have eggplants again on my bushes. I'm very happy about this. Hopefully um, Mr. Eggplant Eater stays gone. Although I have put some little nubs on the ground uh, for him just in case he comes back since uh, raccoons tend to be opportunistic. But uh, got a few flowers, a few fruits, so pretty good. And the second recipe on comes in, and it looks like the pill bugs ate uh, the seed leaves. So, well, doing what I can. <laughs> An update on my red curry squash. Um, it 
It was now starting to shoot out a vine, so I put a tomato cage around it for now just to see how it does. And there's the other one. It's still very small, but it should get very big in, in a couple of weeks. And I'm ending the day by starting some seedlings in the greenhouse. So I decided to go ahead and start these outside rather than inside. Um, one, it seems that our electric bill was getting pretty high from the heating pad and the light. So since it's pretty decent here um, in spring, I'll give this a try. So I'm planting five types of spinach. I haven't had much luck with spinach in the past. Um, I've only gotten I think it was the big ruffles to grow, but I grew it in the wrong kind of pot, so it stunted, but I'm going to try it again. So this time I have the big ruffle spinach, the corenta spinach, round leaf spinach, salad sensation, and crocodile spinach. And then I'm also planting the pixie cabbage, which is supposed to uh, be about a four to five inch head, so again, Lettuce size, the size that is manageable for us would be great instead of a huge head of lettuce. But I also want to see whether it's heat tolerant and can grow here in uh, zone 10. Uh, beside that I have um, some common thyme and creeping thyme. So some of this I want to use actually as um, garden herbs and others I want to use to start as ground covering in the front and backyard. Uh, particularly the creeping thyme is for ground covering. And then I planted some uh, broadleaf sage and I'm um, hoping that I can plant that in the front then it'll be more um, heat and sun tolerant than the uh, other plants that I tried out there. And this is a look at the greenhouse as I close out for the day. Everybody's doing nicely. I'll check on these guys that I pulled the aphids from tomorrow morning. And if there's aphids on them again, then I have no choice but to go ahead and spray some neem on them. And here are my last bit of plants. The delicata hasn't come up yet, either in here or um, outside in the cloth bags. I'm not sure what I need to do. Maybe I need to sprout these as well. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I'll give it another week. All right, this is uh, good night, and until next time.